morning, Ocean Runner here. I was out running by the ocean and I was looking at the tide pools and wondering what was in them. Well, now it's high tide, so I can't actually go and check them out. But there happens to be a tide pool touch tag at the center, so I thought I'd enlist my friend Kate to see if I could learn more. Hey Kate, how are you? Cool, how are you? Good. Can you tell me a little bit about what we have here at the center? Absolutely. So, like you mentioned, there's high tide outside right now. And the tide goes in and out twice a day, and right now all the tide pools out there are covered up. Yep, they are. <laughs> but if you come in the center, we have this little model ecosystem here of our rocky shores system, and you can always check out the tide pools right here. So in here, if you take a look, there's a lot to explore. We have a lot of sea stars, and you can see them sitting on the rocks here. A lot of times, if you actually lift back a rock, You'll find all sorts of things hiding underneath here. Here are some baby sea urchins. Oh, look at those. As well, yep, you've got a good northern sea star right there. When you flip them over, you can see all those little tube feet underneath. Yeah. Oh, and the urchin has the same thing. Yeah, they these guys too. are in the same family. They're both echinoderms. And when they're underwater, they extend these little tube feet with little suction cups on the very end. And that's how they move around and actually get their food. Now, is that also, I mean, it's not very wavy in here, but the waves are crashing back and forth in real life. So is that something that they use to try to um, stay in the same spot? Absolutely. They have to hold on tight to the rocks. Otherwise, they're going to be washed out to sea. <laughs> oh, what about this little oh, guy? Oh, little guy. Yep, this is one of our um, hermit crabs. And this guy, as he grows bigger, he has to find a new home. We have some little baby hermit crabs in here, too. Sometimes if we turn him upside down like this, he will right himself on the rocks. Excellent. Now, I notice you have a lot of mussel shells in here. Yeah, and this one is kind of neat. Um, Oh, I thought it had a hole in it. Um, sometimes we can kind of be nature detectives and see who ate the mussels. So this is a functioning e ecosystem, even though it is indoors. So a lot of these empty mussel shells here have actually been eaten by some of our inhabitants. So see this little round hole here? Oh, yeah. So this guy, that tells me that this one was eaten by a dog whelk. And a dog whelk is a white snail. I don't know if you can find a white snail in here. And they are carnivores. So our other snails, our periwinkles, are herbivorous. These little guys. Okay. But the dog whelks are carnivores. So herbivorous. So do they eat seaweed or what do they, they do? Eat? They'll, they'll eat um, algae. And usually what they'll do is scrape the algae off the rocks. Okay. So a lot of times you can see a little trail of where they've been. Gosh, there's so many treasures in here. So I plan on going out the next time it's low tide and going to do some exploring. Now, is there stuff that we don't have in here that would be out on the rocky shore in a tide pool? Yeah, we, um, there are a lot of animals that are subtidal. So when um, the intertidal zone is kind of the zone between the highest high tide and the lowest low tide. Okay. And when you go out on the rocks, you'll see there are different zones. So you have the splash zone, and that's where you find a lot of barnacles and periwinkles and snails like that. The middle zone is where we find most of the seaweed and crabs, um, some urchins, sometimes some stars. But the subtitle, that's the area that you see a lot of the soft-bodied animals. So a lot more of the sea stars and the sea anemones. So the anemones are very delicate, and this um, there are a lot of hands that go into our touch tank here. Sure. So um, so we don't put a lot of sea anemones in here. I'm trying to think who else is missing. Any lobsters? Are those yeah, we don't have any baby lobsters in here. If you go down to the drowned forest at low tide, you find lots of baby lobsters, and we don't have any of them in here either because they're. Um, I would classify them as delicate too. Sure, sure. And they have pinchers, so you don't want anybody well, losing a finger. That. <laughs> That's right. Wow, well, there's so many great things in here. I'm definitely going to have more questions for you later, but at the moment, I gotta run, so thank you. Bye, Nicole. Take care.